Hello, and thank you for joining ALA for today's webinar, Today's Best Practices in Law Firm Marketing and Business Development with John Rimson, Jr. Remember, all ALA webinars are available on demand. They also count for certifi certified legal manager credit. Learn more at alanet.org forward slash CLM. If you have any questions about today's webinar or future programming, please call one 847 267-1396. It is my pleasure to introduce your speaker for today, John Remsen, Jr. One of the country's leading authorities on law firm leadership, management, marketing, and business development. After serving as marketing director at two major law firms, Remsen formed the Remsen Group, a consulting firm that works exclusively with law firms. In 2002, he created the Managing Partner Forum, a highly acclaimed conference series for leaders of smaller and mid-sized law firms. In 2012, he was inducted into the College of Law Practice Management. John, if you're ready to begin, the floor is all yours. I am ready to begin. Thank you, Courtney, for that introduction and welcome everyone. Good to be with you this afternoon. <laughs> Uh, to present a topic near and dear to my heart, which is marketing and business development for lawyers. Um, as we get into the program, please uh, don't hesitate to ask questions. And there's the type-in capabilities that were explained earlier, and we'll try to take those questions as we go through uh, our session. So Courtney may be interrupting me from time to time as you folks type in your questions, want to make sure we get to those. And if there's some, some things we don't cover this afternoon, you'd like to uh, carry on the conversation, please feel free to contact me directly, and I'll give you my contact information uh, at the end of our session. Um, if you've heard me speak before, uh, you may hear some familiar themes. Um, if you haven't heard me speak before, hopefully um, you'll learn a thing or two. Uh, marketing and business development is not going away anytime soon. I think competition is really heating up and the pressure for law firms to get closer to clients and really ramp up the uh, effectiveness of their marketing programs is uh, increasingly important. Um, our next slide is the uh, tidal wave of change uh, affecting the legal profession. And uh, I love this slide because there is a tidal wave coming at us. Bill Cobb, a uh, frequent speaker at ALA meetings, talks about the tsunami of change. Uh, two years ago, he said the tsunami is coming. Uh, now he asserts that the tsunami is here. Uh, Long-term trends, none of these going away any time soon. Competition will continue to heat up. Uh, technology, more demanding clients, big law really distancing itself from the pack in terms of profitability and performance compared to smaller and mid-sized law firms. They recognize it's time to run the firm as a business, uh, not a loose confederation of sole practitioners sharing office space. Uh, so uh, the, the party's over. The country club days are dead. It's time to sharpen our focus and run the firm more as a business. And a lot of lawyers do not like to hear this. Common reaction. Uh, business as usual for many firms. I, I see a, uh, you know, a failure to adapt, to evolve to, uh, to the changing marketplace. Uh, but change is a coming, and the pace of change is only accelerating if you haven't read Dr. Larry Richard's work, I talk about it all the time. You should check it out. Um, Lawyer Brain is Larry's consultancy. He was with Hildebrand Altman Weil and has done much research on the lawyer personality. And as firm administrators, you all feel these uh, personality characteristics every day. Uh, lawyers tend to be highly skeptical, resistant to change, don't like risk, love autonomy, low resilience, a uh, tough group to lead, but uh, it's time to evolve, it's time to change, it's time to work together as a firm, give up some autonomy for the good of the firm and its long-term interests and success. Here's what I see a lot of, folks, in my work uh, about the country. Uh, firms refusing to adopt and evolve, continue to run the place, business as usual, and I love this slide because it's, uh, it's relevant in the case of many, many law firms. Instead of risking anything new, let's play it safe by continuing our slow decline 
into obsolescence. I see this happening all around. I'm often called in to work with once great firms in mid-sized towns, and they're just sitting back doing business the way we've always done it. And uh, they're watching their uh, client base erode, and their talent poached, and they uh, continue that slow, steady decline into irrelevance. Today's session, uh, we t I bring in a lot of data. I find lawyers, law firms respond to benchmarking data, what other firms are doing. Often that can be very helpful to convince your lawyers that we need to act. Look what everybody else is doing. We don't want to be left behind. Uh, I find that often uh, motivates lawyers to uh, get off the dime and, uh, and look forward. Uh, but these are uh, some of the some of the let me jump back to that slide some of the data we do a survey of managing partners every other year uh, so our most recent survey was in the uh, late spring of 2017 uh, where we had 154 managing partners weighing in on a set of questions uh, at our annual conference the managing partner forum we deploy audience polling technology and capture some nice data there. And as well, we participated with ALA in a uh, leadership and governance survey last August, in which 254 uh, principal administrators, firms, 10 or more lawyers participated. So that's the sources of the data I'll be presenting to you this afternoon. Strategic planning, very quickly, if your firm does not have a strategic plan, I strongly suggest that you get one. Uh, more and more firms are moving in this direction. Certainly big law has gone there. Many firms struggle with implementation, in my view, because they take on too many things. No one's accountable to get things done. Uh, but even firms with uh, plans that, that, that admit we don't so, do so well on implementation report, it's a good exercise. And within strategic planning, on the bottom of this slide, marketing and business development tops the list of, of, of initiatives firms are working on. Marketing and business development. Uh, just to skip through, about 40%, in this case, uh, this is our survey uh, last spring among managing partners where we had 44% claiming to have a firm-wide strategic plan. We've seen that number at about 40% for oh, a good five years running. Uh, how you doing on implementation? Yeah, see, there's some admission from firms that we could be doing better. Only 10% grade themselves an excellent score on the implementation of the plan. Uh, even with so-so implementation, uh, firms will report. Our next slide will show us that uh, it, it brings a positive um, uh, response to the firm in terms of our pro uh, cohesiveness, our profitability. Uh, so here, 74%, usually we see that number 80, 85% of firms say, yeah, our strategic planning initiative has improved our firm's performance. That's pretty compelling data if you believe your firm should have a strategic plan, but it doesn't. Within the context of a strategic plan, here's what firms are focusing on. There's marketing and business development way ahead of just about anything else, improving lawyer productivity, number two, uh, succession planning, growth strategies, but... Uh, Strategic planning and, uh, and, and business development are really, uh, really hot for smaller and mid-sized law firms. Here's our recommendations, generally speaking. Uh, advocate a plan. If you can't get it at the firm level, take it at the practice group level, maybe a branch office level. Be inclusive in the process. Five years, don't try to take on too much, just three or four initiatives, and let's get them done and assign some accountability and uh, update the plan regularly. Moving to marketing. I love this slide. Uh, George's own Honey Boo Boo. I'm in Atlanta now, uh, and she's participating in her beauty contest, which more and more clients are using uh, in their selection of outside counsel. Uh, but marketing and business development, here's some good benchmarking data. Two to four percent has been the benchmark for years, 20 years. Firms have been investing two to four percent of their gross revenue in marketing and business development. But what we're seeing in recent years is a market shift in how they're spending those dollars away from marketing, and I'll, I'll give you some examples of marketing, toward business development. And I don't think most lawyers understand the distinction between marketing, business development, advertising, sales, uh, you know, public relations, social media, how all these pieces fit together. Uh, I define marketing as the things we buy, 
business development are the things we do. Talk about that in a minute. Within marketing budgets, uh, we're seeing increases in budget uh, and, and dollars spent on website and internet-based uh, initiatives. Seminars and events, I love them, but there's a right way and a wrong way to, prevent, to present a firm seminar or a firm event. Branding, content, marketing directors. Yet I still see many firms squandering their precious marketing resources on things that I don't think make much sense. Often when it comes to charitable contributions, powerful partner pet projects, and uh, rankings, directories, listings, uh, there are 700 and some. Uh, last count by our friends at Jaffe. Uh, is anybody reading these directories? Uh, does it factor into the decision to hire outside counsel? Much depends on your target audience, but I see a lot of firms uh, signing up for directories that nobody reads, nobody cares about, um, and spending their marketing dollars here. This slide really jumped out at me, and this is uh, our audience polling at our managing partner conference where we asked 86 managing partners sitting in the room, what percentage of your firm's revenue are you investing in marketing and business development? And a fourth of the people in the room said we're spending north of 4%. That opened my eyes. Uh, that's the first time I've seen, uh, you know, uh, that many firms investing greater than 4% into marketing and business development. So it's here. It's maturing. Uh, firms are starting to figure out what's working, what's not working. And uh, none of this stuff is rocket science. It's just a matter of getting it done. And I think bringing a team approach to our marketing, we're not a bunch of individuals working independently of one another, but we work together in concert, playing off each other's strengths. I think we can accomplish far more as a pack than we can uh, a bunch of lone wolves running out there chasing anything that moves. Here's some hardcore data, and this comes from the survey we did with ALA in August of last year because uh, I figured you guys had a better handle on the numbers than the managing partners. So hard numbers. What's your spend? 17 versus 16 in website and Internet marketing. And look at those huge jumps in the dollars and resources law firms are bringing to bear on their online presence. The website, it's your front door. Does it reflect the quality of your firm, the quality of its lawyers, uh, that website is really, really important to creating a first impression. Go take a look at my website. I'm a sole practitioner working out of my house in Atlanta, Georgia. And I can't tell you how many times people will ask, well, John, how many people are in the Remsen group? Because I look bigger and probably a lot more authoritative than I really am because we've invested in a, in, in a good, strong website that features content and good draft graphics and such. Uh, content uh, management is, is a hard thing for law firms. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Firm events, I love events, love events, and I think every firm should be presenting some sort of annual client appreciation event. Uh, maybe we're doing an industry seminar series for real estate developers and topics they care about. Think breakfast briefing. I like small and intimate events. Uh, where we can develop relationships and follow up. I love events where we mix clients and prospects in the room because often what happens is your clients say good things about you to your prospective clients, and that's a good formula right there. So events, seminars, talk to your audiences about topics, about venue, about speakers, uh, my audience, managing partners of law firms, and I've learned because I asked them what draws you to an event. One, topic. It's a topic I care about. Two, the speaker. I recognize the name. Three, the opportunity to mix and mingle with other managing partners. So I'm really tuned in on the issues that are keeping managing partners awake at night. And when we present events, we present webinars, it's on topics we know managing partners care about, not what we want them to know, but what they want to know. And so often I see law firms, you know, come up, well, clients need to know this, clients need to know that. Well, the clients may or may not care about it 
ask your clients what they're interested in. Compare that with what you all want to present. Now you got something. Branding and content management. Content. Good articles. Timely surveys. A lot of firms struggle with the content. 90% of law firm blogs ever started lie dormant because it's hard to sustain quality content week after week, month after month uh, content. Uh, do we hire ghostwriters? Do we hire a PR firm? Are we relying on our lawyers to provide the articles and the content for our newsletters and blogs? Uh, a lot of firms challenged. Uh, maintaining, sustaining quality content. Organizational involvement, finding the right organizations, plugging in, getting active. You got to show up. You just can't join stuff. You got to get involved, join committees, participate actively, work your way up to leadership. <clears throat> the key is finding the right groups. Where do the clients hang out? That's where we want to be. If we do a lot of banking work, we should be involved in the State Bankers Association. If we do a lot of work with uh, real estate developers, uh, maybe we should look at NAOP or BOMA or ICSC. There are dozens and dozens of organizations out there. Uh, do the due diligence, find the right groups, and, uh, and show up and get involved. Charitable contributions, mm, kind of maintaining level. Uh, I see a lot of firms, you know, giving their um, partners, uh, you know, a couple thousand dollars, carte blanche to spend as they want. I think there should be some accountability to how that money's spent, and often they're dispensing it to charities that may or may not have anything to do with the firm's uh, overall strategy. Rankings and directories, I have strong opinions here. And uh, we did a, 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 a webinar not long ago uh, with folks from Best Lawyers, Chambers, uh, and a young lady at Paul Hastings. Her job is nothing but to assess and evaluate the directories and listings and figure out where their firm wants presence and then develop the submissions. I see a lot of money being wasted here. Um, uh, lawyers have egos. They like to see their name in lights. But, you know, before we invest dollars in a directory uh, or a ranking, uh, let's make sure it's relevant. Our clients read it. They care about it. It influences their decision to hire outside counsel. Here's the statistics on staff. I think at 20 lawyers or more, there's some compelling arguments to uh, hire an in-house marketing director. But what I learned recently, I was engaged by a firm in Delaware to hire its first director of business development. They already had a marketing director for many years doing a fine job. But they decided they wanted to bring in someone to work more directly with the lawyers on their business development skills. Among the top ten firms in Delaware, my client was the last to hire a full-time director, uh, director of business development. I, I, I was an eye-opener for me. And then I reached out to the LMA folks, and it turns out about seven of ten new jobs coming to the law firm marketing profession involve business development, business development as opposed to marketing. And we'll talk about the difference uh, as we segue into our next set of slides. Here's sales training for the lawyers. Surprised we don't see more dollars going here, uh, but the idea of bringing in folks to work with your lawyers and teach them a little bit about building relationships building reputation, asking for the sale. Uh, these are what directors of business development tend to do. Uh, I'm surprised we don't see more dollars invested in lawyer sales training. Uh, this is not a skill set they teach you in law school, and many lawyers are very, very uncomfortable with the notion that they've got to go out and press the flesh and build relationships. Um, most lawyers, interestingly, tend to be introverts, that's Larry Richard's research. But you think about that, uh, you know, who are the kinds of folks that go to law school? People who like to read, write, research, much more comfortable in the library uh, than they are uh, in a social setting. <clears throat> law firm networks, uh, I'm a proponent of law firm networks generally, and about three in ten mid-sized firms find their way to a law firm network. There are dozens of them out there, like anything. Do your due diligence, find the right group, and when you find it, you plug in. Individual business plans. 
This is nice benchmarking data if you'd like to see your firm uh, think about individual lawyer marketing plans, individual lawyer business development plans. Show us how you're going to spend that money. Um, think about it. Uh, give some thought to it. Uh, be strategic, uh, not just reacting to opportunities as they present themselves. About 40% of firms claim that they require, keyword require, not highly encourage, require individual marketing and business development plans. There's a template in your handout material for a marketing and business development plan. Uh, I've also included a template for an industry practice group, uh, which I think is uh, something else to consider we'll talk about in a moment. Our recommendations, generally speaking, and these are very general, because every firm's different in terms of its personality, its culture, its client base, but generally, I believe, start with your current clients. So often, firms get all lathered up going after new clients. Well, it takes a heck of a lot more time, effort, energy to generate a new matter from a new client than from a current client. So I suggest to firms that let's look at our current clients and who do we want to get closer to. Um, let's put some initiatives in play to make sure they're coming back to us. Go visit them. We provide seminars on topics they're interested in. We invite them to our annual client appreciation event. Certainly, we provide great service in terms of responsiveness and accessibility. We'll look at some stats in a minute. Start with the current clients. They're your number one source of future business. They're your number one source of referrals. Go visit them. Solicit their feedback. Respond to what you learn. I'm also a proponent of industry practice groups. Uh, in the early days of law firm marketing, uh, we were marketing our areas of law, marketing litigation, marketing corporate, marketing environmental, marketing estate planning. Firms have figured out, the more uh, evolved firms, that the action is with industry groups and marketing to industries, the collection of services we offer. So if we've got a financial institutions practice group, it offers both transactional and litigation services to the industry. Sets up our target audience, showcases our expertise. Uh, new clients are looking for industry expertise. They're not necessarily looking for litigators. I like individual marketing plans. I like training. Help the lawyers out. They don't teach this stuff in law school. St you know, start with a tricycle, then, then, then training wheels. Uh, before they jump on the big bike. Uh, but start them young as first, second year associates and set an expectation that we would want our young lawyers uh, to invest, let's say, two hours a week, 100 hours a year in marketing and business development and explain to them the types of activities that we're looking for. Going to the grocery store is not a marketing activity. Um, you know, but writing a speech is. Uh, maintaining your LinkedIn profile is, uh, taking a young accountant to lunch might be, uh, but uh, create that expectation, track the time, and, uh, and I think you might see some desired results. Uh, we're about 25 minutes into our program, and now I'm shifting into some, that's benchmarking data just to kind of set the stage. Uh, now we're going to drill in on best practices, what works, what doesn't. And uh, Courtney, any questions out there? Because I'm relying on you. And having heard none, let's uh, keep, keep rolling here. Here's John Wanamaker. He's often credited as the father of modern advertising. And I love this quote. I'm not sure what works and what doesn't. Uh, the father of modern advertising. Uh, so, you know, we try things, but we track and try to assess what's working, what's not, uh, so that we're spending our money wisely. Here's Peter Drucker, one of the uh, leading business authorities of our time. And I love this quote, what gets measured gets done. What gets measured improves. So if we want to see our lawyers out there building relationships, involved in the community, track the time require a plan that's thoughtful, consistent with firm goals, plays to the individual lawyer's strengths. You know, you put the plans out there, you track the time, 
Uh, you hold a monthly meeting where people are expected to report on what they're doing, and we might see some things get done. So install some mechanisms to measure uh, the, uh, the activities and contributions you're looking for. Um, I'm here at a DRI Managing Partner Conference in Chicago this week, and I heard it a, separate, a couple of times already today. Here we are in insurance, with insurance defense firms, arguably the most commoditized practice area out there, and they still talk about it as a relationship game. Clients hire lawyers, not law firms, generally speaking. They hire lawyers they know, they like, they trust. It's pressing, pressing the flesh, breaking bread, uh, FaceTime. Um, I think this, despite all this social media stuff, and if you were expecting to come here all about social media, I'm sorry I've disappointed you. I think social media should complement and enhance uh, the FaceTime and the genuine relationship building activities. Here's a, a set of facts. I just got an email from a, a marketing director at a big law firm challenging me. John, do these facts still hold? Because uh, I developed this slide probably 15 years ago. And yes, these facts still hold today. It takes a hell of a lot more time, effort, and energy to generate a new matter from a new client than a current client. Fact. Most commercial law firms, there are exceptions, but in most commercial law firms, 80, 85, 90% of next year's business is going to be coming from your current clients. And I'll bet you could drill down further and note that the top 20% of your clients generate about 80% of your revenue. That suggests that maybe we should be paying attention to our page one clients. Uh, the 80-20 rule coming into play, uh, and then 8 to 11 impressions to convert a prospect to a client. That's a courtship. Uh, that's, that's building trust. And it doesn't happen over one lunch meeting or one seminar, or one article. It's a cumulative effect, and it's very, very difficult to isolate the but-for activity that prompted a new client to hire your firm or an existing client to give you a new matter. Eight to 11 impressions. Uh, most lawyers give up after the second or third impression. They'll go to lunch once or twice with a prospective client, sit back in the ivory tower, and wait for the phone to ring. And then they get frustrated when the phone doesn't ring. So that didn't work. Well, no, no, no. You, you just planted the seeds and neglected them. you got to water those seeds, fertilize those seeds uh, before they're going to bear fruit. And most lawyers, just, just you know, they want the immediate. Uh, and uh, it takes time to build relationships. It takes time to build trust. So... My, my, my summary over all that is that the, 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 the highest and best ROI can be achieved through existing clients. Existing clients. Let me throw a few more facts on the table. Clients hire lawyers, not law firms. I mentioned here I am at DRI, and you, oh, they're shopping price, shopping price, shopping price. And here these managing partners, many of them very effective rainmakers, are saying, no, it's a, it's a, human game. It's a people-to-people -people game. Clients hire the lawyer, not the law firm, generally speaking. They hire the lawyer they know, like, and trust. Great service is what keeps clients coming back. And if you ask lawyers what, what keeps clients coming back, most lawyers will tell you quality work, quality work product. Uh, if your client is not a lawyer, they probably don't know a quality work product. But they do know if their calls aren't returned. They do know if their emails don't get responded to. They do know if the deadline promised isn't met. And that's largely how they assess whether they not they have a good lawyer who actually cares about them and their matters. Responsiveness and accessibility, and in this day and age of iPhones and cell phones and the rest of it, you can't hide behind a fax machine anymore. Uh, clients want you now, not tomorrow, not when you have a chance to get back to them, 
They want you now. So I think if you want to keep your current clients happy, you really focus on responsiveness and accessibility, and that's from your most senior lawyer down to your receptionist. Everybody should tuned in, be tuned into service. Service, service. When shopping for a new lawyer, the research suggests that clients aren't looking for litigators or corporate lawyers. They're looking for industry expertise. If I'm running a convenience store, I want a lawyer who understands the issues that convenience store operators have to deal with, and there are a lot of them. Uh, so target industries, and look at that industry practice group material I put in your handouts, and I set forth a practice group worksheet that really starts to distill the concept. And don't set up 15 industry groups coming out of the gates. Start with one or two, but get a team of lawyers, litigators, transactional lawyers. Heck, include some of your support staff, too. They have good ideas, and they interact with clients. Uh, and set up a, a, a pilot, uh, an industry practice group. Look at your page one clients. What industries do you see? Good place to start. Industry practice groups support this notion that clients are shopping for industry expertise. And if you go to any AMLAW 200 law firm website these days, you'll often see their areas of law, and then you'll see industries served. And guess where, you, where, where do you think the clients are going? They're going to industry served. And, you know, showcase some of your representative clients. Showcase some representative matters. Set forth the services you offer that industry. Plug into the industry's trade association. And there you develop reputation uh, among decision makers in a position to hire and refer. I'll skip over that slide. Marketing and business development. Big shift we talked about. Uh, business development, I, I, I look at as the time. Our lawyers, our professionals are investing in organizational activities, visiting clients, giving speeches, writing articles. You can't buy that stuff. You can't buy relationships. You can't buy reputation. You've got, you've got to go out and earn that trust. Here are some examples of marketing. Your website, you need a good one. You need a good one. It supports the business development activities of your lawyers. Uh, I have a client in Tennessee, and, and this managing partner, I think, really, really gets it. And he describes marketing as spreading the seed to attract the birds. Business development is taking out your rifle, shooting that bird, taking it home, and cooking it up. you got to do something. So marketing, the seed spreading activities is our website, our brochure and collateral. If we're doing some advertising, directory, sponsorship, these are check writing activities. Uh, lawyers don't have to do much here except to sit in their office, wait for the phone to ring. Uh, and this is what we were focused on in the early days of law firm marketing and business development. We had to have that brochure, don't you know? Uh, <laughs> Boy, I remember trying to put together 25 years ago our, first, our firm's first brochure, uh, and there were some lawyers in the firm that, why do we need this? Uh, well, you know, uh, we, we don't see many brochures anymore. Things tend to have gone to an electronic format, but, but your website, a um, uh, good example, branding, all those good things. Here's where the action is. Here's where the action is. Business development. Going to visit our clients. That's not a crazy idea. A lot of senior lawyers will tell you, well, my clients don't want to see me. I'm the last person they'd like to see. They only call me when there's trouble. Uh, try turning that around and ask your clients, hey, can we come see you? Want to learn a little bit more about your company? Meet some of your people? Thank you for your business. I'm not coming out to sell you. Uh, I, want to sh I want to learn about your company. Could become that trusted advisor. And you do that through deeds and actions, not just words. So go visit your clients. Um, get involved in their organizations. Uh, I encourage lawyers to get out of the bar and go where your clients hang. And that's often their industry trade associations. It might make sense if you get a lot of referrals from lawyers, you're hanging out at the bar. But generally speaking, uh, hang out where your clients hang out, and that's their industry trade association, and would, you wouldn't believe what's out there when you go looking for it. 
uh, there's associations for everything. And if the association that you, you're looking for, you can't find it, wh- why don't you start it? Uh, I kind of did this with the Managing Partner Forum. Um, I'm looking for opportunities to present to groups of managing partners. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're hard to get through to. So I, I'm a sole practitioner, folks, so if I can do this, imagine what you all can do with your collective resources. Um, I put together a managing partner forum and a little advisory board to ask them about the topics and the venue and the speakers and get their input. And uh, I'm telling you, if I can pull something off like that, uh, you, can, you can too. So plug into organizations, start one if it's not out there. I have a client in Louisiana. They created the Louisiana Chemical Association. It's got 14 members, some of the biggest polluters you'd ever want to meet. Uh, guess where the LCA headquarters office happens to be located? Within my client's offices. Uh, guess who's presenting the programs? Guess who's um, you know, p- putting out content for them? Uh, brilliant, the Louisiana Chemical Association. Uh, Speaking and writing, for those who like to speak and write, uh, but be thoughtful, be proactive. If you go to theremsongroup.com, I have some tips on how to make the most of your speaking engagements if you've got lawyers who are good speakers and want to do it. Another article that talks about uh, how to make the most of your bylined articles. I think a lot of lawyers put together the speech, then go try to find a place to present it. Or they write the article, then go try to find a place that will publish it, and that's the wrong way to go about it. Talk to your audience. Talk to that program chair uh, about the topics they're interested in. I do this with ALA chapters, and it works beautifully, where I'll talk to uh, a good representation of ALA chapter leaders about the topics they're interested in, and then I line that up with what I want to present, and I put it out there, and many of them take it. But I've tuned into what my target audience is interested in, much more important than what I want to present to you. Uh, what are you guys interested in? Then I match that up with what I'd like to present to you, and now we got something. So make sure your speech is going to be heard before you go put it together and all the work that goes into that. Same thing on writing. Before you go write that article, figure out who you want to get it in front of, who you want to get in front of. Then you befriend the editor of that newsletter publication and talk to him or her about topics, about article length, about copyright considerations. Make sure your article is going to see the light of day before you spend the time writing the thing up. Client entertainment, some clients love it, some don't. Some can't. Uh, But some clients love to be wined and dined, and I would dare say if you present a weekend at the Masters Golf Tournament, uh, that's not a bad ticket, and clients might enjoy going to that. So when it comes to events, do stuff that's memorable, uh, but for your invitation, the client might not otherwise have a chance to do it. Social media to support FaceTime. You're going to go meet some people, Google them. It's amazing what you learn. And you can figure out shared contacts, shared hobbies, shared alma maters. Uh, You know, I'm in the habit of once I meet someone, if I want to continue the relationship, I invite them to connect on LinkedIn. Uh, So I stay in front of them. But it doesn't replace FaceTime. It enhances FaceTime. So use social media wisely. Training and coaching, bring it on. I think lawyers could use it. They don't teach it in law school. There's that 2 to 4%. Here's LMA, Legal Marketing Association, coming in at 25 to 3%. How much time? How much time should lawyers be put into this marketing and business development? David Meister, if you haven't read, I highly recommend a great book called True Professionalism. Uh, in it, he talks about billable hours for today's income. Important. But what we do with our non-billable time, our non-billable firm building time, far more important. Meister argues that collectively, partners should be investing about 10% of their time in non-billable firm building activities. Uh, So there's a number I put out. Associates, within your material, uh, last page, uh, is the ABA's model diet for associate attorneys. This is the ABA suggesting there's more to an associate's diet than just billable hours. This ABA model uh, suggests 2,300 hours a year all in. 
1,900 billable and breaks down those 400 non-billable hours, including a big chunk of it, to business development, marketing and business development. So first years, second years, you know, it's an expectation. We want you to get out there, get involved in the community, keep in touch with your friends who are going places at a law school or undergraduate school, lunch once a week, there's a good habit, maintaining your uh, social media presence, uh, joining an organization and showing up, but habits, habits, habits that will pay off over a career. I've gotten your material, a great article that Maester writes uh, talking about cultivating habits of friendship. Uh, so here's uh, a few few thoughts. I've kind of talked on some of these. Uh, FaceTime, FaceTime, you can't buy that. You've got to build trust. We're talking about friendships here. You trust your friends. You don't necessarily trust a, a lawyer hitting you up for business. You trust your friends because I've known this person for years. I've seen them in action. I know them. I like them. I trust them. Uh, lawyers and teams are, is good. So if we've got industry practice groups, for example, uh, some of us are good at writing. Others would prefer to schmooze at, a, at an event or wine and dine clients. Others of us would prefer to go give speeches. And if we work together as a team, you know, we can play off one another and, and accomplish far more uh, than a collection of individuals operating independently of one another. Mixing clients and prospects in a small, intimate setting is good. Uh, think about industries, specific target audiences. You're just not out there casting bread on the water, hoping to catch something. You know what you want to catch. You're marshalling resources accordingly. 8 to 11 impressions. Uh, 8 to 11 impressions. Uh, I think often young lawyers particularly have unrealistic expectations. They think they're going to go out and reel in clients as a third-year associate. No, probably not yet. But we want you out there building your network building your reputation because when you're 40 years old all of a sudden it's going to come together and your friends uh, will now be in positions to hire refer direct legal work um, I'm going to quickly go through this stuff I'm looking at the time we've got about 15 minutes or so uh, strategies with high ROI potential vis-a-vis -vis existing clients there are some at client service initiative, uh, but you got to deliver the goods. If you, uh, you know, are, are putting the message out there that we're responsive, we're accessible, we return phone calls, we'll keep you informed on your matters. You, you better deliver the goods. Uh, but clients like that. It's the number one reason they come back to a law firm again and again and again. Uh, get the feedback. I like post engagement questionnaires myself because they're client-specific, they're matter-specific. You might set it up online, and then once you get that completed survey, uh, put a donation to the client's favorite charity. Give them three or four choices and, uh, and, and offer that as a thank you for input. Leaves a good taste in your mouth, really cool. I don't think many firms do that, uh, but client feedback, knowing what we do well, what we don't do well, uh, where we can improve. Uh, go visit those clients. Uh, this, this to me is lawyers visiting clients, uh, but train them up. They're not there to sell. They're not there to talk about the firm, but they're there to thank. They're there to learn. They're there to uh, uh, get to know that client, its operations, and its people better. Uh, client appreciation events we talked about, client seminars. Again, ask them the topics in which they're interested, uh, e-alerts and such. Um, but those are good strategies all to, uh, to uh, enhance relationships with existing clients. New clients, mm, a little more challenging to get them in the boat. Uh, I think the best way to go about it is to plug into their organizations and really and show up. <laughs> show up. I wrote an article a couple years back that just says, you got to go. It's easy to join a bunch of stuff, but that's not going to get you anywhere. You got to show up, get involved. Join committees, work your way through leadership, um, but I think that's a great way to build reputation, build relationships with among a target audience. Choose the right groups, uh, target rich organizations, um, 
do the due diligence. And I often encourage firms to develop a master list of the organizations in which our firm and its lawyers are is involved, and a little grid, you know, who's where. So we're coordinating uh, who who's doing what, where, and uh, we're going to, we're bringing a team approach to our organizational involvement. Uh, speaking to our clients, but don't speak once, never to be heard from again. That's one impression. We need to achieve 8 to 11. Uh, so you want to show up next year and the year after. Uh, so you become known, hopefully, liked and trusted by folks in a position to hire and refer. If you like writing, do that. One strategy might be to market to the referral sources. You know, accounting firms to get to the budding entrepreneur. It's hard to get to that budding entrepreneur that we all want to get hold of, uh, but work it perhaps through the CPA firms. Or if you're looking to bring on high net worth families and individuals for an estate planning practice, maybe we look at financial planners or real estate brokers um, as a referral source. And we do things vis-a-vis -vis our referral sources to get to the end client. Social media Again, to achieve and support FaceTime, not to replace it. 8 to 11 impressions. Training and structure. Uh, here's you know, just stuff on client feedback programs. I just drilled down on some of these. And no matter what you're doing in the context of business development, it's about implementation. It's easy to sit back and talk, 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 talk. And we all know lawyers love to talk. Uh, but you've got to get out and do these things. Start with the tricycle before you move to the bicycle, um, you know, but, but uh, implementation, implementation, implementation. And uh, I'll just tell you a quick story before we move into this closing set of slides. I work with a lot of firms, individual marketing plans. We tried that, John. Didn't work for us. Well, well talk to me about how you set it up. And, uh, oh, yeah, we distributed your template, in fact. John, it was your template. And we asked people to fill it out and turn it in, and nothing happened. Well, of course not. Uh, how about a little training into what goes into that template, a little workshop? How about a clear deadline and a, a person to whom that plan will be submitted? How about someone needs to sign off and approve on that plan? So often they go to this black hole, and, and that's the last we hear of it. We expect our lawyers to get out and do the stuff they put on their plan that they turned in and n never saw the light of day again. Now, come on, that's an unrealistic expectation. I think someone has to review and approve the plan, uh, and there's probably some back and forth here, but the plan should be consistent with firm goals. It should play to the lawyer's strengths. It should be realistic and achievable. Um, and take a look at my template. And so you want, we, we need to submit that by September 15th to Joe. And we're going to empower Joe as our, our partner in charge of marketing to review and approve plans and budgets. And beyond that, a forum for accountability, a monthly marketing meeting where we're going to gather around and report on what you've been doing. Good, crisp, well-run meeting where people are held accountable. The things they say they're going to do, uh, tracking the time, and I think rewards and incentives. I like the idea of perhaps a quarterly bonus for your associates who get out there and do these things. Don't wait to the end of the year and tell them, you know, you didn't get it done. Uh, sit down you know, once a quarter. Hey, here's 500 bucks. Keep it up. You'd be amazed at how that incents behavior. Gamification is something that firms are putting into play as well, creating little contests among associates. Uh, I'll leave with a couple of, couple of parting shots. This is geared toward... Uh, Busy lawyers, because, you know, Lord knows we're busy and we don't have time for this marketing stuff, all this non-billable time you're talking about, John. So here's some practical tips to the, bu the busy lawyer. And, you know, I would suggest there are two kinds of lawyers in private practice, lawyers with clients and lawyers who work for lawyers with clients. And we're, you're 40, 45 years old. Uh, where do you want to be? You want to be fed, uh, waiting for someone to come feed you? Or do you want to seize control of your career? and work on matters you enjoy and clients you appreciate. Uh, clients hire lawyers, not law firms. Clients hire and refer lawyers they know, like, trust. Um, Hi. So to young lawyers, uh, Courtney, we got a question? Yeah, we had, we had a couple questions come in. Um, um, first of all, we have a couple of attendees asking where they can find um, 
the handouts that you were mentioning for the individual attorney business plan template? There sh they should be. I sent a PDF to ALA that I think is among these materials um, that you are walking through. I can, if anyone wants to contact me directly, I my contact information is on the last slide. Fire an email. I'm happy to send this stuff to you. Uh, but there should be a place where people can pick up the handouts, and it includes the, the PowerPoint deck as well as some of the other material I, I've been referencing. So I, I Great, thank you. Back to Peggy. Okay, I Anything think those were. Those, we had a few come in just about that. So um, okay, go ahead. Yeah, I say I invite you to contact me offline directly. Send me an email. Happy to send you, you know, the PDF I put together for this, as well as Word versions. Some firms will like Word versions uh, of these templates, so they can modify them, tweak them, customize them to their uh, particular situation. I'm all about expertise to young lawyers. Become a recognized expert. You're not a jack of all trades. And go get your credentials. Become an expert. And uh, as a young lawyer, you got to figure that out. And it's kind of like declaring your major when you're off in college. Uh, you know, you can talk to your dad, you can talk to your mentor, but at the end of the day, you got to reach deep down in your gut and ask, where do my passion lies? So to young lawyers, I encourage become an expert get board certified, really hone up, uh, get close to the partners who have that expertise that you want to be like, develop your game plan, make it specific, put it in writing, uh, develop really good habits as a young lawyer, as a junior partner, uh, as an associate, habits that are going to pay off big time over the course of your career. Business development's a lifestyle. It's something you think about all the time. Um, it's not just something you stop, start, stop, start. It's something that really works its way into your DNA and into the firm's DNA. Uh, an A-list, I suggest young professionals take the time to sit down and, and who you want to get closer to, balance of 2018 and on into 2019. Um, be authentic, be sincere, but uh, develop a little A-list of people that you want to, you know, develop good relationships, mutually beneficial working relationships with. And, and what are you going to do vis-a-vis -vis the people on your A-list? You're going to take them to lunch once a quarter. You're going to play golf twice a year. You're going to go to a couple of ball games. You know, this marketing and business development stuff can be fun, but it needs to be focused. It needs to be um, strategic. We're investing in these babies. Uh, where's my next slide here? Friendships. Friendships. Genuine, sincere, authentic friendships. And uh, I think the best rainmakers I've ever worked with, their clients are their best friends, practically. Uh, you trust your friends. Clients hire lawyers. They know, they like, they trust. Uh, here speaks to the organizational involvement. Um, I, you, it's funny, you look at some lawyer resumes and, you know, oh, here's this young lawyer involved in eight organizations. And, yeah, you drill down, which ones are you really active in? Well, none of them really. I, but I should, I should go. Yeah, yeah, you should. And you should pick two, not six. Pick two really target-rich organizations and immerse yourself because you're going to spend some time here building friendships, building reputation, speaking, writing, getting involved uh, and I, I suggest that firms consider uh, a, a, a team approach to their organizational involvement. Coordinate who's where doing what as a team. Bring the young lawyers to bear. In many firms, I find senior lawyers hold these organizations. No, no, that's mine. No one else can come here. This is my fishing hole. To which I would say to that senior lawyer, you've got to share your fishing hole and teach the younger lawyers how to fish. Because it's us, not you. We're a firm, and uh, we need to share and uh, and work as a team, um, not a collection of individuals sharing office space. Here's Michael Phelps. Many of you may remember this incident in Columbia, South Carolina. It didn't help his career any. Uh, make sure you know anyone thinking of hiring you is likely googling you and finding stuff. So uh, make sure the bad stuff isn't out there. Uh, some training here, the folks at Jaffe, J-A-F-F-E, 
uh, jaffepr.com. They have a, a neat social media template. If you go to their website, you can find it. If you can't, come back to me. I'll get it to you. Uh, but, a, but, a, but some training and, uh, um, you know, policy, social media policy uh, to make sure your, uh, your firm's, you know, reflected well on the, on the Internet. I'm a big believer in dressing for success, and a lot of lawyers don't like to hear this. Uh, but uh, I think, particularly as a younger lawyer, how you package and present yourself speaks volumes. We've all heard this. There's plenty of research to back it up. Uh, that uh, you know, you get taken a bit more seriously. Uh, you become more no like trust. You know, uh, someone who's competent, sharp, organized, uh, worth the big bucks, dressed like a lawyer. And in most cases, that means uh, coat and tie for men and the equivalent for women. It matters more than you realize. I know it's not fair, uh, but it's the way it is. Sorry. Uh, so here's some, some dispense I, I give to the young lawyers on why they need a plan, uh, what goes into a good plan, and um, the template should be in your handout material. You've seen this slide already. Here's some great resources. If you go to the remsengroup.com, I've tried to build a nice library of articles and templates and checklists and all sorts of stuff. Um, and I reference, for example, how to make the most of your speaking engagement, how to, how to make the most of your bylined articles, uh, how to set up an industry practice group. Uh, managingpartnerforum.org, that's another website we run, and there's a whole section on marketing and business development. David Maester, love his stuff, and I've included some of it in the handouts. Uh, lawmarketing.com, legalmarketing.org, all really, really good resources. And guess what? You'll read a lot of the same this isn't rocket science. It's not rocket science. It's a matter of getting out and doing it and working it into your lifestyle, working it into your firm's DNA. Um, and then uh, here's my contact information. I'm out of Atlanta, Georgia. Feel free. I try to be really responsive and practice what I preach. So feel free to give me a call, shoot me an email. Happy to uh, chat with you offline and uh, provide any additional resources in which you might be interested in. So uh, that said, Courtney, I'll kick it back to you, and thank you, everybody, for being here this afternoon. All right. On behalf of ALA, I would like to thank all of our attendees for joining us today, and I would also like to thank John for his great presentation today. Please take a moment to complete the brief survey that you will see on your screens in just a moment. We sincerely appreciate your feedback as it helps us improve future webinars. Thank you again for joining us. Close today's webinar. <laughs>